What's the relationship between meat consumption and Alzheimer's? Um, the studies show that those countries that eat the most meat have the highest risk and highest rates of Alzheimer's disease. And um, Dr. Popper actually is doing a brilliant lecture uh, um, for this uh, uh, event where she is even presenting data that show that is showing that that as countries adopt a more western lifestyle you can directly correlate their uh, uh, increase in eating meat and dairy and other animal foods with an increase in Alzheimer's and other types of dementia so there is a direct correlation. How does the digestive tract differ in species that eat other animals versus those that eat plants? What does this say about the type of diet humans were designed for? Sure. So uh, meat actually, animal tissue actually, is very quickly and easily digested. Um, and you know this because you know that if you leave a piece of meat on the counter, it starts to rot. It starts to break down on its own. Because if, it, if, it, if you don't have uh, um, a blood system to deliver oxygen to it, if you don't have an immune system to kill off the bacteria, the cells start to disintegrate. So animals that eat animal tissue and that are designed to eat animal tissue actually have very simple and very short digestive tracts. They have very short uh, small intestines. Their small intestine is usually only about three to four times their body length, and they have a very short, straight, uh, 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 large intestine because their large intestine is really designed just to uh, store leftover uh, remnants of a meal for a very short time and then it, get it out of the body before it starts to putrefy. Because unlike plant foods, there's no fiber in uh, animal tissue. Therefore, once they've extracted all of the nutrients from it, what's left over can only putrefy. It can't, they can't extract any additional energy or nutrients from that material. So they just need to get it out of their body before it starts to poison them. Plant uh, eating animals, on the other hand, because of the presence of the fiber, number one, it takes a much longer digestive tract to be able to extract those nutrients because of that fiber, but then because the fiber itself uh, can be broken down, as I said before, into these energy uh, containing compounds, um, short chain fatty acids, and it can be turned into vitamins and so forth, they have these really large long colons so that they can give the bacteria time to actually work on the fiber, break it down, turn it into these bioactive compounds that really help uh, improve their health and physiology. And so, in general, you see that the plant-eating animals have much longer small intestine, much bigger, longer uh, pouched large intestine. And that's exactly what you find in human beings. How does human anatomy compare with those animals that are designed to eat other animals, like a lion, versus those that are designed to eat plants, like an elephant? Um, actually, Interestingly, um, the human uh, digestive tract is very similar to that of an elephant. Elephants. Again, simple stomach, long small intestine, capacious, long large intestine. Um, we have a jaw structure that is designed for processing plant foods. So we have flat nodular uh, molars. Uh, we have uh, um, a jaw joint that's above the plane of our cheek teeth like other plant eaters. Whereas lions, um, like a typical carnivore, have jaws that are built like shears, um, where they have blade-like uh, molars that slide past their lower molars in a vertical fashion, which allows them to slice uh, meat off bones. They have long, dagger-like um, uh, canines, short peg-like incisors that really are used for scraping uh, flesh off bones. And, uh, and they can develop these really huge uh, bite forces uh, in their jaw so that they can crack and break bones apart that they can then swallow and digest. And that's where they get their calcium from, from the bones of the animals that they eat.
Tell us more about how Dean Ornish showed increased telomerase activity after only three months on a plant-based diet. Why does telomere activity matter? What telomerase is, uh, for the listeners that don't know, telomerase is an enzyme uh, that will lengthen these bits of DNA at the end of chromosomes called telomeres. The reason telomeres are so important is because the longer the telomeres are in your cells, the longer the cells will live. And the longer the cells live, the longer you live. Also, the longer the telomeres are, the more res disease resistant the organism is. So the whole idea is, I mean, theoretically, if we could come up with a way to increase our telomeres indefinitely, we would live forever. But every time a cell divides, the telomere gets a little shorter and a little shorter. Now, the telomerase counteracts that to some extent, depending on how active it is, by lengthening those telomeres. But eventually, the telomeres get to a point where once they are short enough, the cell will die. And once most of the telomeres in your body are short enough, you die. So the whole idea is that we want increased telomerase activity because that keeps our telomeres as long as uh, we, we can keep them, which means that we will be the most disease resistant and we will live the longest that we can. And what was important in the study you mentioned was that Dr. Ornish showed that after as little as 13 weeks on a, a, a vegan plant-based diet, they got increased activity of that telomerase lengthening, uh, or, or that telomere lengthening enzyme telomerase by up to over 80%, and that's phenomenal. Do you agree with Dr. Michael Greger that experts estimate 80% of major disease and premature death in this country could be prevented by making major changes in our diet and lifestyle? Oh, that's absolutely true. And, and that's the great tragedy that most of the disease and premature death that we see and that we have all personally, personally experienced in our family and uh, with friends and acquaintances that we know could have been prevented if these people had lived and, and eaten differently. Why are people willing to let doctors crack open their chest, strip veins from their legs, carve out pieces of their internal organs, shoot them with radiation and fill them with toxic chemicals all in an effort to get their health back? That's a very good question, and I, and I uh, tragically, I, I don't have a good answer for it. I mean, I think part of it is that, is ignorance, is that many people don't know that there is an alternative, and that there's a better way. Most people think this is just what happens as you age. As you age, you get sick, you start to fall apart, and if you're lucky, you uh, have your heart attack, you go to the hospital, and then the doctor does all these things to try to reroute the plumbing around your heart to buy you a few more years. But the fact is that none of that has to happen if people would change the way they eat and live. So wouldn't it be much better for people to do the simple thing and eat the plant-based foods they were meant to eat in the first place? Uh, absolutely. I, I, I frequently... Um, uh, tell the story of uh, the Syrian captain in the Bible, his name was Naaman. And um, this happened during the time of the prophet Elisha. Uh, Naaman was a captain in the Syrian army, and he developed leprosy, which back in biblical times, leprosy was a death sentence. But not only was it a death sentence, because it was so contagious and such a horrible, disfiguring disease, when someone developed leprosy, they had to leave regular society and go to a leper colony, which was just these horrible places with these miserable, disfigured people set apart from normal society where you basically just existed until you finally died of the disease. And so when Naaman realized he had leprosy, he was devastated and horrified, and, but he had as one of his servants, a uh, Hebrew girl, who said to him, she said, um, my master, she said, there's a prophet in Israel who, if you went to see him, I'm sure he'd be able to cure you of your leprosy. And Naaman was overjoyed to hear that news. He gathered up this whole 
huge retinue of camels with costly garments and gold and gifts and presents and took this journey into Israel to where Elijah was living and uh, sent the servant to call the prophet out and she went in and she explained why they were there and um, Elisha said go tell your master go down to the River Jordan bathe in the River Jordan seven times and it'll be cured and when she went out to tell Naaman what Elisha had said Naaman was furious he was like I came all this way brought all this stuff and this man won't even come out of this hut and speak to me it's like we've got much better rivers in Jordan than this little muddy stream called the Jordan. And he was just about to leave in a huff. And his servant said to him, she said, my master, if he had asked you to perform some great feat, wouldn't you have been happy to do it? She said, why not just do the simple thing he asked you and see if you get your healing? And Naaman thought about it. And he relented. He went down to the Jordan. He bathed in seven times. And when he came up the seventh time, his leprosy was gone. And I love that story because just like you said, we are willing to take these toxic chemotherapy drugs. We're willing to let people cut open our bodies, remove parts of our organs, reroute the plumbing to our heart. We're willing to do all these great things to try to get our health back once it's gone when really all we have to do is do the simple thing of eating a plant-based diet to avoid all of those problems to begin with.